Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj. I was instructed to speak on Bhishma Dev because today is the occasion of Bhishmastami. So we can't, we won't be able to do the verse and Bhishma Dev in one class because both of them require time. So, um, Shamagori, uh, was it your request that I speak on Bhishma Dev? Um, yes, Maharaj. Well, in order to do that, if it's sufficient time, I would need the whole time. I, need, I would need the whole time. Yeah. Oh, what do you prefer, Maharaj? You want to do worse? We can do worse today. Uh, we can speak on Bhishma Dev. I think that is, would be an interesting topic for the devotees. Uh, That's my choice, but you can give the final decision. Your decision is our decision, Maharaj. Let's say that again. <laughs> Your decision is our decision. All right. Since I've been reading a little bit about Bhishma Dev, I'll uh, make that the topic. <clears throat> And it's actually traditional <clears throat> and uh, that we speak on Bhishma Dev on this particular day. This goes on in our temples generally. And so um, he's not a small person in terms of his spiritual status. And that's why his <clears throat> disappearance day is, or, let's see, is it, yes, it's called Bhishmastami. Um, it's given prominence and it's there every year on the Vaishnav calendars. Okay, so Omagyan Timirandasya Gyanajana Salakaya Chaksu Unmilitam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurudvena Maha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prestaya Bhutale Shri Bhakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamane Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pacharine, Nirvasesa Sunyavadi, Pastyakya Devasarane, Panchakalpataru Vishya Kripa Sindhu, Vishya Patitanam, Bhavane Vyo, Vaishnave Vyo, Namaha Namaha. Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita Gadathar, Sri Vasadi Gauravati Vindam, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, 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 Hari Hari. <clears throat> so I'll read one verse, which is also a Bhagavatam verse from the ninth canto, 22nd chapter. If you want to put that verse up on the board, it's 92219. <laughs> 922.19. And um, this is also yeah, to 19. Okay, 18 and 19 are together. So we'll just read the 19th verse. Okay, Salas Cha Santayor Asid Ganga Yam Bhishma Atmavam Sarva Dharma Vidam Shresto Mahabhagavatam Kavihi. Translation. I'll read the second half of the verse. Hmm. From Santanu, through the wife of, through his wife named Ganga, came Bhishma, the exalted self realized devotee and learned scholar. Go to the next verse. I think the next verse also has something there. <laughs> Bhishmada was the foremost of all warriors. When he defeated Lord Parasuram in a fight, Lord Parasuram was satisfied with him. By the summon of San 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 Santanu in the womb of Satyabhati, the daughter of a fisherman, Sitrangana, 
took birth of her port. Uh, Sachivati was actually the daughter of Upari Chara Vastu, by the womb of a fisher woman named uh, Matsyagarbha. Later, Sachivati was raised by a fisherman. The fight between Parasuram and Bhishmadev concerned three daughters of Kasiraj, Ambika, Ambalika, and Amba, who were forcibly abduct abducted by Bhishmadev, acting on behalf of his brother Vichitavirya. Although Amba thought that Bhishmadev would marry her and, and became attached to him, Bhishmadev refused to marry him, her, for he had taken the vow of Brahmacharya. Amma therefore approached Bhishmadev's military spiritual master, Parasurama, <coughs> who instructed Bhishma to marry her. Bhishma Dev refused, and therefore Parasuram fought with him to force him to accept the marriage. But Parasuram was defeated, and he was and he was pleased with Bhishma Dev. Okay, this is a little of the history of Bhishma Dev, about one section of his life. We'll go back to his beginning. It's actually a very interesting story. And Srila Prabhupada, in a few lectures, he narrates the appearance of Bhishma Dev. Um, in the heavenly planets, there was a particular sage by the name of Vashishta. And Vashishta had a, had a cow, a very, it was a common Denu cow. And the Vasus, the eight Vasus, there were eight brothers, they're called Vastus. Um, they stole the cow. Uh, Vishishta later found out who stole it, and he caught up with the Vastus. And then he was about to curse him, he cursed them. And uh, they begged for forgiveness, and he mitigated the curse. The curse was that you will fall to the earth planet and take birth from a king and from Ganga Devi, the actual personification of the Ganges River. And seven of you, uh, uh, actually six of you, there were seven Boston's, not eight. Six of you will be born and immediately you will be thrown into the Ganga and you'll return to your position in the heavenly planet. So that will be the curse. But one whose name was Diyu, he will have to stay on the earth planet because he was the person who instigated the theft of the cow. And so that Diyu later on became Devabrata and the story goes that there was a great king named Shantanu. In his previous birth, he was known as Mahabisha. Mahabisha was in the heavenly planets along with many other great sages at the time. And he was in the uh, assembly of uh, Lord Brahma in Brahma Loka. He had attained such a high state of existence by his powerful ruling as a king. But then Ganga Devi was there and a strong wind came and blew her clothing in such a way that part of her body was exposed. All the sages and saints in the heavenly planet looked in another direction except Mahabisha. He stared at Ganga Devi. <clears throat> and because of that, Brahma became a little upset and cursed him to fall down to the earth. And so he fell down to the earth and became a king. Later, he was born again in a kingly family. His king father was named was Dilipa. And he was a powerful king, very powerful. One day he was out hunting in the forest and he saw this beautiful, beautiful lady there. And seeing her, he became enchanted by her charm, her beauty, her sweetness, and her apparent innocence. 
being a king, it's kind of fashionable that kings like to marry beautiful women. And they propose their self upon because their position is quite glorious and usually women will accept a king for a husband. Well, he proposed to her marriage and she, she was very much attracted and said, yes, I will marry you. My name is Ganga Devi. So it was the same Ganga Devi personification who he saw in the heavenly planets in a different form. And, uh, but she said, I will marry you only on one condition. Uh, you do not uh, take issue with anything I do, whether it's auspicious or inauspicious. In other words, you don't question my activities. So being very much infatuated by Ganga Devi, <clears throat> he agreed. And so the marriage was completed. And after the first year, a child was born, a son. And immediately after the birth of the child, Ganga Devi took the child and threw it into the Ganga. And this happened successfully for the next six children. Each year, now, Santana is watching. He doesn't know why his wife is doing that. He remembers her, her, her vow that she will marry him only if he doesn't question her. And if he does, she will immediately leave. So after six children, when the seventh one was born, she was about to throw that one in the Ganga, but then he said, no, stop. I cannot tolerate it anymore. Why are you throwing all our children into the river? And she immediately smiled and presented him with the child and said, this child is yours to raise. I am going. So she left. And now he was a king without a wife. And that's quite awkward for a king not to have a wife. And he had a son. But he raised his son very carefully, gave him great scriptural knowledge and also great opportunities to learn military arts under the guise of uh, Aris Samran. And he became a powerful fighter. After some time, he was again uh, uh, performing austerities. And he noticed while he was performing austerities near the river Ganga, that there was something blocking the flow of the river. So he went in that direction to see, and he saw this personality. And uh, the details are a little bit hard for me to recall all of these details, but he saw a beautiful girl there. Her name was Sachivati, and she was the da daughter of a fisherman named Dasaraj. So he became attracted and thought, I do need a wife, and she is very qualified, I can see, because Prabhupada says that women that are born to fishermen, they have beautiful figures. <laughs> this is described by Srila Prabhupada. And so he was attracted by her charm, by her beauty. And so he went to her father, Dasaraj, and asked for her hand in marriage. He said, well, you know, this sounds very good, but I can see you have a son. And if my daughter marries you, then her son will not have any stance anywhere. Therefore, I cannot ac accept your proposal because then your son will be the king and my son will be nowhere. And if she has any, and if she has any children, they will also be marginalized, not given much preference. So, King Santanu left, but he was very morose. He was unhappy that he wasn't able to marry such a team. And Devabrata, his son, was very concerned seeing his father morose. So he asked him one day, and he told him the whole story. 
And then so Devarata went to go see the fisherman. And he asked for the proposal of his daughter on behalf of his father. And he said, well, I'll tell you the same thing. You are the son and you will be the king and therefore my, my daughter's children will have no place. He said, no, actually, uh, your daughter's child will become the king. And then he, the fisherman was very calculating. He said, well, yes, that's nice, but you will have children and they will also vie for the throne. And then there will be competition and a lot of, a lot of uh, possible fighting. So I cannot allow it. And then Devarata said, well, then in that case, I make a vow that I will remain without becoming married throughout my whole life. I will remain a brahmachari. When that word, when he spoke that, a voice from the sky came and said, Bhishma, Bhishma, which means terrible vow, terrible vow. So he had taken a very strong vow for a Kshatriya not to marry at all. It's practically impossible. The nature of the Kshatriya Dharma is to have children and to succeed in ruling the kingdom through their progeny. But he had promised. So when he had promised, Sachivati was given to Santanu and Santanu married her. And then two children were born, Vichitavari and Chitraganga. Chitrangada. And uh, now Devarata was also given the name Bhishma because he had taken that vow. Um, Chitrangana was, uh, was ruling the kingdom for a while, but he got into a fight with a Gandhara who had the same name, Chitrangana. Gandharva was envious because he had the same name, so they had a fight, and the Gandharva won and killed the king. And Vichitavirya was quite unable. He was his body was not strong at all. He was very unhealthy, and so and he also wasn't able to have children, so he couldn't rule the throne. So there we come to the story where Bhishma goes to this uh, sacrifice, as it's mentioned here by this, uh, it's in that verse we read, and that uh, there were three daughters there, and he abducted three daughters to bring them back so um, they could be uh, married to the son, yeah, they were the three daughters. They was the three daughters of Kasiraj. Yeah, Ambika and Ambilika and Amba, like that. And, but he did that simply to bring those girls back so they could uh, be married to on behalf of his brother, Vichitavaria. But when they were brought back, Vichitavaria wasn't able to have any children. So then um, Parasaram, not Parasaram, but Veda Vyas, Veda Vyas was, all, was actually the son of, of um, I can't remember it's the mentions here, Veda Vyas, yeah, here we go here. Chichitrahanga, of whom Vichitavir was a younger brother, was killed by the Gandharva of the same name, Sachivata before him. Yeah, so San, Sachivata, before her marriage to Santana, gave birth to the master authority of the Vedas called Vyasadeva, known as Krishna Daipayina, who was begotten by Parasaram. So Parasaram's son was Vyasadeva, who, who's now under the guise of his mother, Sachivati. So Sachivati tells Vyasadeva to... Uh, impregnate these three girls, Ambika, Amb Ambalika, and 
But uh, Amba, she developed her attachment to, uh, let's see, to, to Santanu after he carried him. Amba, yeah. And so because she did that, she wanted to marry San, uh, Bhishma Dev, who had taken the vow not to marry. And of course, uh, Pandu was born, um, Pandu was born from these women, Pandu, uh, Dhritarashtra, and Vidura. Three of them came from these three women, and uh, one was fathered, the two were fathered by, by uh, Vyasadeva, and one was fathered by, uh, let's see, no, all three were fathered by Vyasadeva. Yeah, on the instructions of his mother, Satyavati. So it's quite a quite an interesting story here. So of course, then when Amba, she uh, wanted to get revenge against Bhishma Dev for not marrying her, she went to Parasaram. No, she went to Lord Shiva, and performed austerities. And then uh, no, first she went to Parasaram. Yes. And Parasaram said, all right, I will fight him and I will defeat him and then he will marry you. But in the fight, Bhishma Dev defeated Parasaram. And Parasaram said, what can I do? He has defeated me. I cannot give him any instructions. So Amba was, was still revengeful. She went and started to pray to Lord Shiva. And Lord Shiva appeared to her and said that actually, you have to give up your body as Amba and take birth again. And when you do, you'll be born in a particular family, I forget, and you will get a chance to get revenge at Bhishma Dev. So this person who, who Amba was born as Shikandi, and Shikandi was a, a girl, but she traded her her feminine gender for male gender with a yaksha in order to be a soldier against Bhishma Dev. She fought on the side of the Pandavas against Bhishma Dev because she wanted revenge against Bhishma Dev because he had refused to marry her. You see how these intrigues go on even today. It makes like today look like quite like ordinary stories. So later on during the fight, when, uh, of course, the story is that Bhishma Dev was fighting on behalf of Duryodhana and the Kurus. The question comes, why did he take the side of Duryodhana? This is interesting. Against the Pandavas, when he had so much affection for Kunti and the Pandavas and the, their children. He had more affection from them, and he was also a great devotee of Lord Krishna. But because he was alone and had no maintenance, and he was a Kshatriya, he was given employment by Duryodhana, who was willing to support him and give him the position as commander in chief second commander-in-chief of his armies along with the Odana, I mean not the Odana, but Dronachari. So he was given a big position and he was maintained nicely by the Odana. The Odana had this ability, kind of a cunning ability, to know a person's weak spot and then to attract that person to come and be on his side by giving that person whatever they needed. He did that with Karna. He did that with Bhishma. With Bhishma. But Bhishma had another reason. And this is interesting. This is the hidden reason why he took the side against Krishna and the Pandavas. And I'll tell that reason towards the end of the story because it's, it's more like a finale for the whole pastime. So now he's fighting. But because he has affection for the Pandavas, he's not fighting to his capacity. 
uh, I have, I have, I'll backtrack a little bit and mention one thing that his father, Santanu, was so pleased when he was willing to allow his father to marry and take a vow of lifetime barren brahmachari that Suta, Suta, Santanu blessed him and said, because of your sacrifice and your love for me, I give you the blessings that you will only die when you want to die. So Bhishma Dev had that power. No one could kill him. He could only die when he decided he wanted to die. <laughs> so now he's fighting against the Pandavas and he is powerful. You know, he, in one day he killed 10,000 of the Pandava soldiers. But still, he wasn't fighting to his capacity. Diodana, he, he understood that you're not fighting to your capacity. He, he criticized Bhishma. He said, I see, you're, you're not fighting to your capacity. You have too much affection for the Pandavas. Now, this was an insult to a Kshatriya. To call a Kshatriya that he's not fighting to his capacity is a great insult. And so he said, all right, tomorrow I will kill the five Pandavas. And uh, I have these five arrows. And these five arrows will be the death of the five Pandavas. And Duryodhana was happy. But Duryodhana, uh, but Duryodhana said, let me keep those five arrows here. And then tomorrow I will give you the arrows at the beginning of the day. Because the Kshatriyas would not fight beyond sunset. When the sun went down, the fighting stopped for the day. And then sometimes even both sides would come together in the tents and they would talk like friends. And then the next day they would be out on the battlefield fighting against each other. So when Krishna understood what Bhishma was going to do, Krishna was concerned. So he went to Arjun. He said, Arjun, you remember? Diodana has promised you a favor and you have not taken it. Now's the time to take it. He has five arrows. Go ask him for those five arrows. So Arjuna came and that was in the evening during the time when they were not fighting. Diodana welcomed Arjuna and they were talking. And he said, why have you come? Well, I've come because I want to uh, accept that offer you had offered me previously. Yes, whatever it is, what do you want? What I'm prepared to give? Because when a Kshatriya gives his word, just like Bhishma Dev, he gave his word not to marry. And he did everything to keep that vow, despite the fact that there was so much opposition for him, in, in him, to accept a wife. But he kept that vow despite everything. He said that I don't fear anything, not the wrath of Indra coming from the heavenly planets or anything more than not keeping a promise. A Kshatriya is like that, a real Kshatriya will keep his promise even if it causes him to lose his life. His promise is more important. His word is more important than his life. So that's the Kshatriya honor. So now, uh, Arjuna says, well, you have five arrows you're holding. Yes, I want those arrows. So immediately, Duryodhana gave the five arrows to Arjuna. Now, the next day when Bhishma realized, he understood this was the trick, trick of Krishna. And so the battlefield was on. The battle was on the next day. Now, this is an interesting thing because uh, when the fighting came on, Krishna knew that Arjuna is no match for Bhishma Dev. Bhishma Dev will finish him off in no time. He was so powerful. And uh, so Krishna said, there's only one way you could possibly survive this. You have to take Shikandi. Shikandi was a 
was the person who took reappeared as a Kshatriya soldier after trading her femininity for masculinity and put him in the front of you, then you can fight against Bhishma because Bhishma will not fight against Shikandi because Bhishma knows the history of Shikandi and know that Shikandi is either a eunuch or a woman and he will not fight against a eunuch or a woman. So he did that. And in the fight, Bhishma Dev was kind of frustrated seeing Shikandi there. And therefore he could not fight directly with, with Arjuna. But then he decided anyway to access his power. So what he did was he decided he started to really fight and he shot arrows and broke the chariot that Arjuna was on. Arjuna fell from the chariot along with Krishna because Krishna was on the chariot too. And our Bhishma Dev was really serious. And then Krishna broke his promise because Krishna said, I'm coming on the battlefield, but I'm not going to fight. I'm simply going to be on the chariot with you. I will not fight. That is my promise. But seeing his devotee in trouble, Krishna broke his promise. So it's really nicely described in the uh, ninth chapter of the first canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. The beautiful vision of Krishna. Krishna waxed anger and he jumped from the chariot, grabbed the broken chariot wheel and came charging at Bhishma Dev at full force. And it's described that his eyes were like red hot anger and his charter, which was blowing in the wind, flew from his body while he was coming at Bhishma Dev. It's a beautiful, beautiful sight. Now Bhishma Dev was so happy because he has a chivalrous rasa with Krishna. That means he fights with Krishna. And that is his loving relationship with Krishna. And so he was shooting arrows into the body of Krishna. And in that fight, it's, it's explained that, uh, that uh, Krishna was accepting those arrows as a lover accepts the love bites of the beloved. And Krishna was enjoying that and Bhishma was also enjoying that. But then, of course, Arjuna was there and Arjuna took the opportunity to fight with Arjuna, with Bhishma. And Bhishma didn't fight with Arjuna because Arjuna was protected by Sikandri. And then Bhishma Dev was felled by a series of arrows fought, fought, given by Arjuna. And it's described that his whole body was covered with arrows and he was unable to fight anymore. So he lay down on the battlefield. As you can see the picture, his whole body is pierced with arrows from his face, from his top of his uh, shoulders all the way down to his legs. But he had the benediction that he would not die unless he, had, unless he wanted to die. And so there he was laying on the battlefield and then the fighting stopped as soon as that happened. And then Krishna took the opportunity because Later on, he, of course, Bhishma Dev laid on the battlefield for approximately 18 more days because this was in the month of December. And it says that the Kshatriyas like to leave the body when the, uh, when the sun traverses the northern hemisphere. And the sun was in the, the southern hemisphere at that time. So, uh, Bhishma Dev laid on the battlefield for a number of days and just uh, giving darshan to everyone who would come. Although he was in pain from the arrows, he tolerated the pain at the same time as giving instructions. Krishna understood that Yudhisthira was very, very unhappy about what had happened in the battle had so many men and so many soldiers and so many horses, so many elephants died because of him, one needed to be installed on the throne. So 
Krishna took the opportunity to bring Yudhisthira to Bhishma Dev, and Bhishma Dev instructed Yudhisthira on how to rule the kingdom. And that's a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful discourse. In fact, it's part of the Shastriya, Shast, uh, what do they call it? Shastras. Uh, His Holiness Bhakti Tirtha Swami has re- written two books called Leadership One and Leadership Two. In Leadership Two is the instructions given by Bhishma Dev to uh, King Yudhisthira. During that time, Duryodhana came and he brought some cool water for Bhishma Dev to drink, but Bhishma Dev refused to drink the water. And then Arjuna understood. So Arjuna took his arrow and shot an arrow into the ground. And from that arrow, a well sprang up and water came out. And then that water was given to Bhishma Dev. Bhishma Dev sent a message to Diodhana. I'm not interested in accepting any more gifts from you, no matter what it is. <laughs> and therefore he wanted to show his affection for the Pandavas. And he did so by accepting the water produced by Arjuna. Many, many great sages, saints, soldiers came to take darshan of Bhishma Dev. During that time, he was on, the, on, on his deathbed, waiting for the time to depart. And that's a really, really heart-rendering time. Even Krishna himself was personally there offering his respects to Bhishma Dev. And then, as I mentioned earlier, why did Bhishma Dev take the side of Diodhana in the fight against the Pandavas when he had more affection and love for the Pandavas? And he knew Krishna was the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Why did he take the side opposite of, of Krishna? And this is a very, this is a very interesting point that's brought up from time to time. And that is that Bhishma Dev wanted to show the world by his example that if you're against the Supreme Personality of Godhead, you will lose. No matter how powerful you are, no matter how previously you have shown success in whatever you have done, if you oppose the Lord, you will lose. So that's interesting because that applies to us eternally, time of memorial. If we stay connected with Krishna in devotional service, Krishna always wins and his devotees always achieve the benefit of Krishna winning. He takes care of his devotees. He protects his devotees. He brings his devotees back to him in the spiritual world. So this is an interesting pastime of Bhishma Dev. There's much more about his life. Uh, Devotees can read the ninth chapter of the first canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. It's called The Passing Away of Grandfather Bhishma Dev. Bhishma Dev is one of the Mahajans, Brahma, Narada, Shiva, the four Kumaras, um, Prahlad Maharaj, Janaka Maharaj, um, who else? Uh, Bali, uh, King Bali, uh, Sukadev Goswami, and a few others. I can't remember all of the names. Uh, oh, Kapila Dev. Yeah, Kapila and Ma- uh, Kapila, Manu. These are all Mahajans. And it says in the scriptures, Mahajano Yena Katasapanta, Yamaraj. Yeah, Yamaraj actually speaks the verse that describes these 11 other Mahajans. Mahajano Yena Katasapanta, that the truth of religious principles, because we see what is actually true religious principles. This is a discussion that goes on eternally. 
how do we how do we understand clearly what is true religious principles where are true religious principles actually found and this the verse is i can't remember the preceding lines but the last line is mahajano yena katasapanta panta means to follow in the footsteps maha one has to follow in the footsteps of the great souls there's where truth lies that tarko pratishta shrutina vibhinnam can someone find that verse the first word is tarko pratishta tarko pratishta shrutina um, it's from the mahabharat if you look on verses yeah it's it's verse yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's the verse. Tarko Patishta Shrutinam Vibinam Nafsis Risha Yasya Mata Nabinam. The next, there's two more lines we need to hear. Oh, Yeah. Tarko Pratishta Shrutina Vibhinam Dharmasya Tattva Nihitam Guhayam Mahajano Yena Katasapanta Just follow the Mahajans. Follow those persons who are pure devotees, who are Acharyas, who give the understanding of eternal religious principles. So in our case, as ISKCON devotees, we follow Srila Prabhupada. You might find contradictions between what Prabhupada said and what other great souls have said. That really doesn't really have anything to, it will not affect our devotional service. If we follow carefully, strictly, with careful understanding of Srila Prabhupada, and how he organized this movement and how he taught the devotees to follow his instructions, that is perfection. Mahajano Yena Katasapanta. Because uh, get the actual translation of that verse, Tarko Pratishta Shrutinam Vibhinnam. If we can find it in one place, the whole translation. Yeah. The dry arguments are inconclusive. A great personality whose opinion does not differ from others is not considered a great sage. So the great sages, they differ from each other. And that difference in the, that, gives, that gives them the principle of being a great sage. Simply by studying the Vedas, which are variegated, one cannot come to the right path by which religious principles are understood. The solid truth of religious principles is hidden in the hearts of an unadulterated self-realized persons. Consequently, as the Shastras confirm, one should accept whatever progressive path the Mahajans follow. This is a verse spoken by Yudhisthira Maharaj in the Mahabharata. Vamana, Vana Parva, yeah. It's a verse that is often quoted by the Charyas, yeah. So, yeah, so therefore, there are 12 Mahajans, and Bhishma Dev is one of the Mahajans. And in the Srimad Bhagavatam, it gives a explanation of the principles taught by Bhishma Dev in his position as an acharya teaching <laughs> eternal religious principles. Okay, so there's a little bit about this great personality, Bhishma Dev. So I would suggest devotees take time and read the ninth chapter of the first canto, and you'll get practically uh, many, many more important details about the, the nature of this great personality. Okay, so we'll stop here and uh, see if there's any 
discussion. Hare Krishna Maharaj, thank you so much for uh, enlightening us on the topic of Bhishma Dev. Uh, and, and thank you for explaining exactly why he fought on the side of Duryodhana. Uh, it is it is a very hard thing to, for us to understand. You know, why would someone who loves the Pandavas so much and still uh, he fought on the wrong side. And he also fought against, like he shot arrows at Lord Krishna and you explained why he did that too. So thank you so much, Maharaj. Uh, a very beautiful class. Hare Krishna. If anyone has any questions, please go ahead and unmute yourself. Or comments, if there's a comment too. Mm -hmm. Hare Krishna Maharaj, I just wanted to say thank you for the beautiful, beautiful class. And as Indu Mataji just said, um, you gave us <laughs> the, the important explanation of why Bhishma Dev fought with Duyodhan. It was, it, like she said, it's very difficult to understand that. Um, and I'm just very grateful for your class. I'm always grateful for your class, but especially with this one in particular, um, because there was so much explained that um, I question. So I, I very much appreciate it. Hare Krishna. Okay. Okay. Hare Krishna. <laughs> Hare Krishna Maharaj, I do have a question. Uh, so why is Bhishma Dev of all of the of all the people, why is he given so much significance? Like uh, we are asked to uh, celebrate uh, Bhishma Panchaka and again now uh, Bhishma Ashtami. Yeah. So, so why? Yeah well, yeah, well, I would say from my understanding that because he is a, is a Mahajan and just by that pastime, you could see how much love Krishna had for Bhishma Dev. You know, in that ninth chapter of the first canto towards the end, you get a real indication by these verses and Srila Prabhupada's purport, the feelings that, that uh, especially the purports, the, the feelings that Krishna had towards Bhishma Dev. Krishna was practically like, like a person who was sad that Bhishma Dev was now leaving the world. Yeah, he was, uh, the love that Krishna showed towards Bhishma Dev is quite elevated, <laughs> quite deep. That's one indication. And two, you know, he stayed alive long enough to instruct Yudhisthira on how to rule the world. Although he never took up a position of ruling, he was, he was the most knowledgeable in that authority, that in that understanding and how to rule. His whole life was sacrifice, even from the time he was young, when he sacrificed for his father, and later on he sacrificed for the Pandavas. He was 170 years old when he departed. That's why he was called Grandfather Bhishma. Mm -hmm. thank, you. thank you so much, Maharaj. Thank you. 
And how he left his body, that's also. It says, just like birds become quiet at the end of the day, everyone became quiet when Bhishma Dev took his last breath. There was a quietness amongst all the hundreds of people that were surrounding him just before he left. It's a very sweet exit. It's just heart, very heart rendering when you read that, how he left the world and what was the mood when he left. And he left at his own volition. That was the amazing thing. Which is very instructive. One should be ready to go when your time is up. <laughs> One should not leave untimely or ahead of time, but when the time comes, you will know it. And then at that time, you will say, my life is over on this plane. Now I move forward to my life in the spiritual world. So everyone will get that opportunity if we follow very carefully the process of devotional service. When it's time to go, we will know and there will be no resistance. Wanting to stay here or wanting to continue our relationships on this level. Bhishma was indicated of that. It was time to go and he chose his time and everything was perfect. And we can learn from that too, that when death's approach, usually for a devotee, death gives a warning sign that now it's time to, to wrap up your time in this realm. So it's all over. And the devotee knows, oh, okay, Krishna is calling me. Now, I, now my only business is to absorb my consciousness in his devotional mood service. In other words, become absorbed in thinking of his lotus feet. Okay. Go ahead, Mataji. Sorry. <laughs> Do you want to say something? Sorry. I, I will wait. No, as Maharaj was speaking, I was just realizing that, yes, Lord Krishna, he came to see the passing of Bhishma Dev, whereas we don't see anyone else having that great fortune. So, of course, he is extremely dear to uh, yeah. the Lord. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Please go ahead, Deepti Mataji. Okay. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. Thank you so much for the lovely class. Um, can I ask one question, Guru Maharaj, please? Mm. Um, so up till now, we have been listening that uh, Bhishma Dev just fought with uh, Kauravas because of the duty he has and he had taken the vow. Was that not some not one of the reasons, isn't it? It was, it was only reason that he wanted to show the world that you cannot fight against Supreme Lord. Mm -hmm. Well, he also, from the material point or the external point, <clears throat> and you'll hear it discussed that if someone takes care of you and maintains you, you become obliged to that person. So that's what Deodhana did. He took care of Bhishma Dev really nicely because Bhishma Dev had no connection with anything being a Kshatriya. Mm. So Diodhana gave him so much facility, 
everything that he needed to live and gave him some position within his army, big mm -hmm. position. So he felt obliged to Diodona. So that was from the external point of view. That's, you'll find that with great souls, and this happens a lot, there are the apparent reasons why something is happening or doesn't happen. And there's the more remote reason. It's like, without going into detail, why did Lord Chaitanya take sannyas? There was no need for him to take sannyas. <laughs> but that's, there's an internal reason why that Lord Chaitanya took sannyas, which is not mentioned so readily. The external reasons are given, but the internal reason is not talked about. Yeah, also at the same time, uh, was there any particular reason for uh, Dronacharya and Krupacharya as well, similar to like Bhishma Dev had to fight uh, with the, in, in favor of Kauravas? Mm, that's interesting. Yeah, also Dronacharya was nicely maimed by and nicely maintained by Diodana. Diodana was was a was an expert diplomat. And so he knew how to offer so many gifts, situations, positions to these persons in order to get them to fight on his side. But Kripacharya, I'm not sure. Kripacharya is a great personality. But Kripacharya lived on after the battle of Kurukshetra. Mm -hmm. But Kripacharya, that he um, he was fighting on the side of Diodana also. I'm not sure. Yeah. He was. Yeah, you're right. Yes. Yeah, he was a great personality too. He was born in a very unusual way. Yeah. And that's mentioned in the ninth canto about Kripacharya's appearance. Uh, yeah. I was always curious about Kripacharya and I did a little research about his life. But it doesn't give much indication of why he fought on the side of Diodana. The kings of the world lined up against each other according to, they took different sides. Some took the sides of the Pandavas, some took the sides of the Odana. It says practically every king in the world sent their armies to fight on one of the two sides. And the Yodana was uh, his military prowess was greater than the Pandavas. I think he had something like, I don't know how many, 11 Oxahaney divisions of soldiers and infantrymen, chariots, and the Pandavas had eight. 11 versus seven, okay, yeah, seven. Thank you. So yeah, his power, his military power was greater. But then again, where if you're against Krishna, you lose. Mm. But Guru Maharaj, uh, if you think that way, that um, Dronacharya and Kripacharya were Brahmin uh, originally, and uh, right. they could have said that, oh, being a Brahmin, we don't want to participate in the war. And they were quite high elevated souls. And they, if they don't want it, didn't want it to go against uh, Pandavas, they could have, they had a reason not to fight, but they didn't yeah. accept that reason. Is there any particular reason for that? You have to, um, I, I actually can't answer that question. Uh, Dronacharya's, yeah, yeah. I mean, Creepy was married to Dronacharya. Creepy was the brother, sister of Kripacharya. Mm -hmm. So there's some connection there. Yeah. The two children were found in the forest after they were born 
And they were abandoned and later found and, and taken in, both Kripacharya and Kripa and Kripi were taken in by, I believe, by King Drupada. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. But you have to do a little research and see what are the details of their life and find out why they accepted. Because, yeah, Dronacharya was a Brahmin. So is his son, Asvatthama. He was a Brahmin too. Mm -hmm. So far, what we have heard is because of uh, the attachment to Asvatthama, and Asvatthama was. Uh, like as you mentioned, that uh, Duryodhana was very clever, and he uh, he got Aswatthama in his in, in his side, and he pursued Aswatthama to ask Dronacharya to fight for him. Was it? I don't know whether it is right or wrong, but this is what was uh, heard before. It must be in a, you probably find it in the Mahabharata. Mm. It's not mentioned in the Bhagavatam. Oh. Mm -hmm. um, I uh, again, I can't honestly answer the question. I just don't know. <laughs> I it, I was just wondering. It's, it's, when it's I read... a point, a point of research. <laughs> take, take some time and research it out, and then next week you can tell us all the answers. Okay. <laughs> I'd be interested in I'd be interested in finding myself. Yeah. When I read Mahabharata, I, ha I had this question, but you know, I wasn't getting chance to ask anyone. But today, luckily, we are, as we are discussing about this little bit of Mahabharata, I said, let me ask you this question because it is, I was like, I don't know. I don't, yeah, in my list of great souls, I don't have any information on Tripacharya. You have to do a research on Google and see where you can find it. It's there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, this yeah, this one person. This is in the ninth canto, I believe. Mm. Yeah. They were found and brought to Santanu Lalatoda. People was taught Dhanurveda martial arts by his father and became one of the Kuru's martial teachers. Huh? Mm -hmm. So it seems like he was, he was brought up by Shantanu, which was, you know, a Kshatriya family. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't say that he was a Brahmana. I think he was though, mm -hmm. because he was born of the sage Sar Saradvan. Yeah. Well, there you go, there's a little history. <laughs> but being born as a Brahmin but raised as a Kshatriya. Hmm. Okay, so thank you. Thank you, Guru Mahal. Yeah, so let's, um, I think we do a, a round of japa before we end the program, is that correct? Thank you. Yes, Mahal. Okay, so it's a nice way to follow up the holy name. Everyone get comfortable, sit straight, and begin. Jai Sri Krishna, Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita Gadadara, Shiva Siddhi Gaur Bhakta Rinda, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari Hari, Krishna Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari Hari, Krishna Hari Krishna, Krishna. Hari 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 Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari. 
Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna, Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari 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 Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama. Hari 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 Krishna, Hari Krishna. Krishna Krishna, Hari 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 Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari 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 Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari 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 Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari 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 Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari 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 Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna. Hari 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 Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari. Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Hari Hari. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare. Hari Ram, Hari Ram, Ram Ram, Hari Hari, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Hari Ram, Ram Ram, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari, Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari, Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari, Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama. Ram 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 Hari 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 Krishna Hari Krishna Hari 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 Ram Hari Ram Ram Hari Krishna Hari Krishna Hari 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 Ram Hari Ram 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 Hari Krishna Hari Krishna 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 Ram Ram Hari 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 Krishna Hari Krishna 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 Hari 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 Ram Hari Ram Ram Hari Krishna Hari Krishna Hari Hari Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. 
Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna, Krishna Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari. Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna. Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna. Hey Rama, Rama, Hari 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 Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari 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 Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Hari 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 Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna. Hari Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari 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 Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna. Hari Rama, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Hari Hari, Hari Krishna, Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Hari Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna Hare Hare. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna. Krishna Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Hari Hari, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Hari Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Hari Hari. Hari Rama. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Ramam, Hare Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hari Hari, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hari Hari, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Ram, Hari Ram, Ram Ram, Hari Hari, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Ram, Hari Ram, Ram Ram, Hari Hari, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Ram, Hari Ram, Ram Ram, Hari Hari, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Ram, Hari Ram, Ram Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Ram, Hari Ram, Ram Ram, Hari Hari, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari 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 Rama Hari Rama 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 Hari 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 Krishna Hari Krishna 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 Hari 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 Rama Hari Rama 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 Hari 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 Krishna Hari Krishna 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 Hari 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 Rama Hari Rama 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 Hari 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 Krishna Hari Krishna Krishna Hari 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 Rama Hari Rama 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 Hari 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 Krishna Hari Krishna 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 Hari 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 Rama Hari Rama 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 Hari 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 Krishna Hari Krishna Krishna Hari Hari 
Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. So the Prabhupada ki jai. Hail Brahmabad ki jai. Or Bhaganandi Hari Hari Bo. Hari Bo. Shamagori. Shamagori. Are you there? Yes. Hare Krishna. Every, every time. You always ask me to tell a joke. Yes, Maharaj. Yes, yes. Okay, there's a, there's a feedback coming in, so I it's got a somebody's feedbacking. Okay, so I'll tell you a joke because I know you like jokes, and last time I didn't do it because I didn't. <laughs> All right, so you know, in our temples, we have Mangalarti, right. And then we have what's next? Tulsi Puja, right? Shringade prayers. We have Shringade prayers, that's right. And then we have Tulsi Puja. And then after that, we do Japa, right? Correct? Yes, Maharaj. Okay. So the question is this is a, this is my joke. The question is, what do you call a person who comes every day just at the end of Mongol RT? Just before the before the conch shell blows, they come just before the Mongol RT ends. We call him a member of the fan club. <laughs> what do you call a person who comes after that? Mm. What's after that? Uh, the yeah. prayers. So they're yeah. members, yeah. members of the they're members of the Lions Club. Lions Club. <laughs> Good one, good one. <laughs> and what do you call a person who comes after that? Uh, members of the garden club. Correct, members of the garden club. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's the joke. <laughs> oh. And I added one more. Yes. This was the, and then, then the third, the next one is what do you come call a person who comes after that? I call members of the Rotary Club. They the Sarkamambulate. Rotary Club is Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 the Rotary Club. <laughs> okay, so I hope you're happy with my joke. <laughs> yes, Maharaj. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. We'll see each other again on Friday. Yeah. Everybody keep well and uh, Thank you, stay close to the holy name. <laughs> Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you so much, Maharaj.